Hello, Eddie and Elijah. All right, so today we'll be discussing a paper, a research paper called Actin Cytoskeleton and Complex Cell Architecture in an Asgard Archaeon. And this is uh, done by Rodriguez Oliveira et al., published online in December 2022. So prior to reading this paper, I'd only heard of Archaea a handful of times in, say, high school, early high school, and I was completely unaware of what Asgard Archaea even was or what it meant. I'm going to admit to that seeing the length of the paper, 26 pages, was a little bit discouraging. I was also I was slightly annoyed at the length. I also thought that the info wouldn't be cool or fascinating. Perhaps my mind is too small to comprehend such concepts at the cellular level. And after reading the abstract and doing a little research of my own, I can truly say that I am fascinated. I'm not saying this to, I don't know, I guess get on the good side of whoever's marking this. I think it actually is a cool paper when you get into it. So, uh, yeah, let's get into the meat of it. I had my brother read the abstract to come up with questions because he represents the um, the person who has no actual prior knowledge to this paper or the concepts that go on with evolution that we've got, uh, covered in this course. And so he at, his first question was, he asked what Asgard Archaea was and what eukaryotes are. And so Asgard Archaea to answer that is a group of unicellular organisms and they are considered to be the closest relatives to eukaryotes and eukaryotes are uh, multicellular organisms and so this paper is inspired by the close relationship between asgard archaea and eukaryotes and how their ge the genomes of Ar asgard archaea contains uh, many eukaryote signature proteins or esps and so this information gives rise to the thought of how did the eukaryotic cell evolve? And I'd also like to note that eukaryotic uh, characteristics present in Asgard archaea are, also, are not found in um, other bacteriums or archaebacteria. And so the abstract of this paper proposed that a complex actin-based cytoskeleton predated the emergence of the first eukaryotes and was a crucial feature in the evolution of the Asgard phylum by scaffolding elaborate cellular structures. So, the specific... What? Good night, love you. Sorry. So, the specific species in question during in this paper was called Candidatus lochiarchaeum ossiferum. And note that this species is a member of the Asgard phylum. They found it thrives in an anaerobic state at 20 degrees Celsius on carbon sources that are organic. And so they found it in sediment in water. And to get a viable population of this species, they had to grow it under very specific medium so as to optimize the growth of their specific um, organism in question, while not also a lot, uh, providing a good space for other bacterium to grow on that medium. And so eukaryote signature proteins, ESPs, are present in the genes of this species, and this does include some actin homologs. And I'd also like to note that homologous means similar in structure, position, and evolutionary descent. And this, is, this was given to me by the definition section of the Oxford languages. My brother also asked, what are eukaryote signature proteins? And basically, these are the proteins by which we can differentiate between eukaryotes and prokaryotes, or multicellular organisms and unicellular organisms. The allure about this is that we can find similarities between eukaryotes and um, prokaryotes, to which we previously thought were only, um, were only present in eukaryotes. And so what happens when we find one similar in archaebacteria species, and how do we see the similarities? How do we go about visualizing or imaging them? And so to actually visualize these extremely small organisms, the research behind this experiment used cryo-electron tomography to uh, visualize the structures within these cells, these uni supposedly unicellular cells, or organisms, beings. And now I know what you're probably thinking, oh, Jaden, what, uh, uh, what does that even mean? What is electro or cryo-electron tomography? Uh, let me explain. This is a method by which uh, researchers can see macromolecular structures within the cell. And so they do this by freezing the cells and then thinning them with a focused ion beam, which is then imaged in three dimensions using a transmission electron microscope. 
And this info is courtesy of thermofisher.com in the life sciences category. I didn't just pull it out of my brain. I'm not that smart. I'll get there. And so, yeah, what the researchers found in this case were complex networks of branch protrusions. And these protrusions were long range cytoskeletons that extended throughout the cell bodies, seemingly connecting the cells together of um, our species in question which is the Candidatus Lochiarchaeum ossiferum. So my initial thoughts upon reading this were, what do these long range cytoskeletons mean? What is their function? Do they allow for signal transmission between cell bodies? And if this is the case, can we truly call this species of archaeobacteria unicellular? Is this evidence that they branch off from archaea bacteria and become multicellular, giving rise to eukaryotes? Are they the ancestors of eukaryotes? Yeah, was this just the middle stage between um, being unicellular and then pseudo-unicellular and then multicellular? Did the, Yeah, basically, did these um, Asgard archaeum, did they give rise to eukaryotes? All questions to ponder. I know not the answers or nor how to verify this. And yeah, these are just my initial thoughts. I hope that did a decent job of explaining what they went over. And yeah, excited for the future.